Good morning and welcome to our daily word and prayer. My name is Tom Short. So glad to have you along with us today. As we get into the word of God, talk about it and allow it to transform our lives. And it does and it will if we'll simply receive and believe. If we're talking about the words of Christ. And I'd like to ask you a question. How would you define success? How would you know whether your life really what accomplished what you were meant to do? I'd like to look at what Jesus said. This was on the last day of his life and his last prayer to God that we are familiar with here. And in John 17, verse 4, he says this, I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. What an astonishing statement. <clears throat> don't you wish you will be able, don't you hope you'll be able to make that statement at the end of your life? Boy, I sure do. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished, having fulfilled, <clears throat> having done what God gave him to do. And now I want to be able to say, I did what God gave me to do. We'll have one life. And we can spend it on many, many, many things. And, and yet, as has been said, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And that's the question. What are you giving your life to? Are you giving it to accomplishing what God gave you to do? I hope so. So I want to give a hint or two about how... <clears throat> You and I, I hope I will be able to, and I hope you'll be able to, at the end of our lives, make a similar statement to what Jesus said. First of all, that we are really given to his work. We're really given to doing the will of God. Notice what Jesus said in John chapter 4 and verse 34 and 5. The, the disciples had gone into the Samaritan village to get some food, and they came back to Jesus and wanted him to eat. And Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. That was his nourishment. That, that was something that he did every day. It was what motivated him, what strengthened him to, uh, to do the will of God and to accomplish it. And I want to challenge us in this very thing. And I want to challenge myself. And for that matter, if you want things, you can pray for me. Pray that I would be a person who does the will of the Father and accomplishes, fulfills what God has me to do. Now, you won't accomplish that if you just do it sporadically. You won't accomplish that if you don't give yourself to it. Jesus was saying this was as important to him as his food. I mean, food's pretty important, isn't it? We eat every day. And I think Jesus was saying that every day in his life, he was making progress and involved in accomplishing the purposes that God gave him to do. As we think in our lives, <clears throat> God has given us things to accomplish in your family, in your, well, in your own life, in your family, people you know, people around you, perhaps your career. But often when we think of accomplishing something, we think of what am I going to do in terms of something physical or a career or a job or a project. But let's go on and look a little bit further at what Jesus said about him accomplishing his, the will of God in his life. He said this, do not say, John verse 4, verse 35, do not say there are yet four months. Do you not say, excuse me, do you not say there are yet four months and then comes a harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look in the fields that they are white for harvest. He was telling him to have an urgency. That it wasn't the, the, this harvest that were, they were going to have, this accomplishing the will of God, wasn't something for off into the future. Have an urgency about it now. And he's talking about a harvest. What was that harvest? Well, as we know in the context, he had just basically led this Samaritan woman to faith in him. 
she'd repented and believed. Now she was heading off into the village where she was going to tell everybody about it. And they were going to come back, and over the next few days, there were going to be many people who believed in Jesus. When, Jesus, when we, the Bible talks about a harvest, it's usually using this agricultural term to talk about people. Jesus talked about a harvest of souls, a harvest of people. He talked to Peter about fishing for men. You really can't look through the Bible and the life of Jesus in particular without getting the pretty strong impression that people matter to God. People are important to God. People, God wants us to accomplish things in the lives of people. And so I want to ask you, in your life, what would you want accomplished before you were to pass? But when you'd say, I've glorified you, I finished the work, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to graduate. I'm ready to move on to, the, to, to heaven because I've accomplished the work. And what I'd like to suggest is more, op- more likely than not, it has something to do with people. Something to do with people. I don't know if you've seen the movie The Bucket List. It's a pretty good movie because people talk about having their bucket list. And on their bucket list, what's something they want to do in life before they die? And people get older, they start thinking about their bucket list. Lots of people people come to Israel with us because Israel's on their bucket list. Before they die, they'd love to see the Holy Land. Some people want to see the Grand Canyon or Niagara Falls or they want to travel to Europe or, or whatever. But the thrust of the movie was they did, you know, one of the guys was very, very wealthy, Jack Nicholson, very, very wealthy, did all these things, traveled all these places, did all these things. But the real thing that had to happen was reconciliation with somebody, his daughter, where there was not love and there was a a rift and that needed to be reconciled. That's what needed to be on the bucket list. What needed to be there, what God wants us to accomplish has to do with people. And can I encourage you in your life to be thinking, who are the people Who are the people God wants me to touch? Who are the people God might want me to mend a rift with, ask forgiveness or or to forgive or to reestablish or to reach out and to love? Maybe they're in your family. Maybe they were in your church. Maybe they've left your church. Who could it be? If God's convicting you of someone, well, maybe that's part of what God wants you to do. There may be a harvest that God wants you to be involved in. There's yet, to be, there's yet to be souls to be saved. There is a harvest. Jesus was giving himself. What did he say? I, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. I'm involved in the harvest. God may want you to be involved in the harvest. How would that be? Maybe there's people God wants you to speak with. Maybe there's people God wants you to pray for. Maybe there's people God wants you to support who are out working in the harvest. Missionaries who I know many who could... You support whatever it may be. Are you living in such a way that you'll be able to say at the end of your life, I glorify thee, having accomplished the work you gave me to do. Now, I will say Jesus had a real clear mission. His mission was to go to the cross, die for our sins. And his mission was involved in training the 12 so they could carry on the work after he was done. Jesus didn't reach the whole world in his generation, but he set something in, in line. He, he set something in motion that would spread the gospel through the world. And so he, had, he knew what he was to do. Was that only for Jesus? No. I want to share one other example here of someone who had a similar statement at the end of his life. This is the Apostle Paul. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, Verses 7 and 8, Paul says this. This were his last words. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, 
which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. This is something God wants. Jesus said it. Paul said it. I think God wants us to be able to say it. That I have fought the good fight. I, I pray that that would be something people could say of you. You're fighting it now. And when your end comes, you had fought the good fight. You finished the course. Oh, I pray that could be said of me. I have kept the faith. So many people fall away. So many people start strong and don't finish strong. You've kept the faith. Might these things be said of me? And might they be said of you? So that we will, we will glorify the Father here on earth. And if so, we can look forward to the future when that crown of righteousness will be awarded to us because we've loved his appearing. That's how I define success. Each day, each week should work towards that. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. I'm going to want to every day be eating, every day be making progress, growing to the person, affecting others, making progress in being the person God made me to be and what he's called me to do. Don't let days go by. Don't let weeks go by. Don't let months go by where you're not making progress. There is an urgency. Don't say there's yet four months and then comes a harvest. The harvest is ready now. And God's, and let's be a part of it. Amen. And then we'll have that day when we can say that wonderful thing. And Father, we pray in Jesus' name today, we pray that we would be people about your business. We'd be people that are fighting the good fight. We'd be people who are running the course. And I pray we'd be people who keep the faith. And I pray, Lord, that we would live our lives this way, day in and day out, so that in the end, we could say, I've glorified you because I did what you called me to do. I've been faithful. I've accomplished what you called me to do. And we could, we could be in those rare people who look forward to our look forward to our passing into the next world before you where we'll see Jesus face to face. Lord, that day will come. And I pray when it does, we would be successful people because we pursued the things that you called us to do and we accomplished them for your glory. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you that we can live like this. Thank you for reminding us where the finish line is. Might we each be finishers for you. And we pray these things. And I pray this day that our food would be to do the will of him who sent us and to accomplish your work. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. I love the word. I hope you do too. Boy, it can challenge us. You get in the Bible, you find something worth living for. God has got your life is significant, my friend. Don't ever think it's not. Your life matters. It's important. And God has a plan and purpose for you. And oh, how I pray you will finish it and accomplish it. It's one reason we come here every day to get in the Word of God day by day, bit by bit, to be building His Word into our life, reminding ourselves that we're His and we live for Him. And we want each day to count for Him. Amen? Very well, very good. If you're new today, welcome. I love to have you along. I hope you will subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment below, introduce yourself, like the video, and share with your friends. And of course, if you're here regularly every day, you know how glad I am to have you along. I love you guys. And until we see you tomorrow, might God bless you, strengthen you as you fulfill his purposes for your life. See you then. Bye-bye.